Seeing no more lights, we will go on to number 11. Um, the uh, framework for educational equity, R277328. Um, I think that probably I will turn the time over to Chair Hansen. Thank you. And to operate. Yeah, I have a, a motion for the board um, that the board refers our 277328 framework to the Standards and Assessment Committee for evaluation of educator training required by statute or rule so that training can be integrated, consolidated, and prioritized to be efficiently and effectively delivered. Second. Second. Do we have that motion that could be pulled up? Hold on a minute. Um, I just want to. I just want to read it because I, it, Scott was a little bit soft. Oh. oh, thank you. Okay, so the motion before the board is that the board refer our two seven seven three two eight framework to the standards and assessment committee for evaluation of educator training required by state statute or rule, so that training can be integrated, consolidated, and prioritized to be a efficiently and effectively delivered. I can um, speak to that. <clears throat> um, absolutely. I was coming back to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this has been a topic of discussion. Our teachers are subject to a lot of training in various areas. Um, and we have had uh, actually new training that's required by, I believe it's HB 428. Um, also looking back at our bullying rule, um, 277613, it has requirements for training. A lot of these requirements are duplicative, um, but they do have different audiences, same topics. Um, I think that in the interest of uh, our teachers, uh, making sure that we value their time, uh, but also deliver the training that's necessary for our teachers and other school administrators, and even students in some cases, there are requirements for students to receive training. We should take a holistic look at this, see what training is required, um, how can we deliver that in the best way so that teachers aren't receiving multiple trainings on the same subject and that we're allocating time properly according to the board's priorities? And I would just say amen if we could make <laughs> not so many trainings. Um, board Member Strait. Yes. With, with the current requirements of the state legislature and legislation that's passed, I think this is a necessary step. Uh, I think this is killing three birds with one stone. And... Uh, you know, I think we, uh, you know, I appreciated the, the words of Chair Huntsman and uh, in regards to the gender identity, I think that uh, in the current political environment and where things are going, and I think that's the best move. And so I think this is, I think this go, goes part and parcel along with that to make improvements that are uh, in the best interest of students. Thank you, Board Member Strait. Board Member Earl. I would also speak in favor of this. Um, as I've talked to districts over the last couple of weeks, specifically about the framework and modules and what's needed, 428, 328, whatever else you want at 28, um, <laughs> you know, some of the concern from them is we, we were doing some of this training already um, and um, asking more in addition to um, is the concern. So I appreciate the idea to narrow down, consolidate, really what do we have available, make it available. You know, a lot of our districts, the bullying rule already requires uh, some of these items we're looking at, you know, putting into these modules. So I do appreciate the thoughtfulness. I do have just one question, if I can ask a question. Um, I would like us to address some of the issues associated with um, definitions would it be better to address it there or to make a separate motion in conjunction with that? I'm just maybe throwing that out there. <laughs> so you're looking... Oh, if, if anybody has an opinion, maybe, or I'll have my own opinion, but... So... I, I'm not really sure what you mean by addressing... Well, I'll make a separate motion in a minute then, so let's... We'll just go there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Board Member Earl. Board Member Norton? Yes, we've had a lot of great... 
things said and done today, but I think I just saw my new favorite five words, integrated, consolidated, prioritized, efficient, and effective. <laughs> that, especially when it comes to, con you know, when it's concerning teacher training, that mm -hmm. list is so long now that it puts fear in my heart whenever we bring this topic up. Um, I would like, if possible, to um, maybe put some specifics into some of those words. And I would like to possibly amend. Are by, you possibly or are you amending? No. And I would, I'm going to okay. be a red right here. Okay. I would like to amend the motion by adding that we um, limit the module, any, any module in this particular area to no more than 60 minutes. May I ask for some, get some clarity before we get a second on that? Would that be okay? Yes. So limit the module or the model training. I just want to get specific. Is it on the module or the model? Well, this is educator training. So Okay, I, so the training, model training. Then. The model training okay. to 60 minutes. Okay, for, for 328, 328 or any that are is coming. I'm saying right now, I'm addressing 328. Okay, so can we now say it again so that I... Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I motion... Nope, I, I would like to amend the motion <clears throat> to... Um, Probably that. Help though. me. Include? To... No, I'm, I'm trying to say limit. I don't know if I want to limit. But limit, limit the time commitment for the model training, addressing R273-28 to one hour. Thank you. Okay, does, does that look like your motion, your that amendment exactly you'd like? That is exactly what okay. I would like to say. Do we have a second to that amendment? Can I ask a clarifying question? Uh, can we do that? And then if you need to change your word, Natalie. I, I was trying to get it to get her amendment. Second. Uh, okay, second. Okay, second. Okay, thank you. We've got three seconds. Um, would you like to speak now to your amendment or you kind of already did? Well, I kind of already did. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, Natalie, do you have a clarifying question on this? Oh, I know that that model training video is out there already. How long is it already? I mean... Do we have to edit it to like shorten it? And because we, we voted on everything those that's are, in those it. Those are two different things. Um, there the, is the, the training um, on training the model training. On 328, but then there with the framework we voted on last time that the training has been being made, but it's not out. It has not finished. So I've seen it out there. <laughs> Um, Maybe I'm, I'm going to go to Chair just a Hansen on point this point of clarification. We yes. did we did go through and approve slide by slide the explanation of R two seven seven three twenty eight as far as what was the content of the rule, and that is out there. It's been published. That's and, right. Yeah. So the training that's being addressed by this framework is the training on the detailed points of R two seven three twenty eight, not an explanation of the rule. So that that's out there. That's what Natalie's referring to, I believe. Um, I don't know the exact length of what it came out is to. Is that what you're exactly, referring to, Natalie? But that then? is that's something that's yeah, been that's, done that, by the board, moved on by yeah, staff, that was already, and is in the field. That's been out for for a few months now. Though, but this this, this model professional training, I'm not sure. The what audience <laughs> of the first one is for professional development. Developers, developers the yes. Audience for this one is teachers. Teachers, okay. If I understand. Okay, uh, board member Earl. I'm just, I'm trying to understand if we, and I do want it limited, whatever we do, if we choose to do that, but it, I, I'm thinking in sending this back to committee, we may, there may already be content that districts are doing that would duplicate some of those efforts, so it may not be necessary. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, you're saying that one hour might not be necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Board Member Hymas. I just just a quick question. Um, this this does come back to committee, right, or to the full board after it goes through committee. 
And then would is committee where you would talk? I was just thinking of your definitions because I had some concerns over some definitions as well. Would that be handled in committee? Is that where yes. that wouldn't need to be? Yes, you do that, it here. Oh. Yeah, but that that it could be handled handled in committee. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And and committee has been working on it. Your your light is not on, Scott. So. <laughs> well, I'm waiting to discuss the amendment. Well, we are on the amendment. You are right. I think they were trying to get clarification if if there if this was a motion they amendment they want to vote for or if it's going to be in there. So I appreciate you calling me on that. Um, Patty, did you have a comment? I did. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to get some clarification on uh, Board Member Norton, your your motion. Um, the part of the clarification is um, maybe a, a possible rethinking of it with this in mind. So just a statement that maybe to consider is um, with the R two seven seven dash three two eight. There are ten elements. Then there are the, of the shells. Then there are four may nots. There are two things in there that are um, guidelines or guardrails. And then there are about three or four things at the very end that say, but you still can do these other things. If you were to give each one of those less than five minutes, you're still into it longer than that. So I think maybe um, we need to rely on the, the administrators being the instructional leaders within their schools and seeing what they already have in place. And then being able to say what is needed at their school specifically where they can identify or a hole or a gap. Because um, in covering something so um, so shallowly, I think there will that would be a disservice to everyone to be able to say, here's a complete training with all of this, but instead they can say, I, I, we know this, we know this, we know this, and then this is the thing that we need to concentrate on either for that individual educator or for the, um, the, the entire school as needed. So maybe by not doing a time limit, but instead of needs or a gaps analysis within their school to see what they, they move, need to move forward. Just an idea. Thank you, Dr. Norman. Um, board member, uh, I, I can't, I just have to call you Chair Hansen. So oh, just. No, just the board member on this one, so we're fine. Um, uh, I appreciated the recognition of those five words that are in the motion that I drafted. Um, integrated, consolidated, prioritized, efficiently and effectively delivered. Um, when we talk about priorities, we're talking about relative importance, and I think we demonstrate the relative importance of training by the time that we allow for it. Um, to impose a, an artificial and arbitrary limit on the training related to R277328 without going through that exercise where we prioritize, look at what's required and prioritize, I think is not a good direction to head. I'm looking at a partial list of training that teachers receive student discipline plans, student searches, student restraints, um, individuals with Disabilities Act, IDEA, use of restraint and seclusionary timeout with special education students, um, Section 504, emergency injections uh, for Anaphylactic Reaction <laughs> Act, asthma, diabetes and glucogen, seizure rescue medication. I mean, there's a list that just goes on and on here, and how much time each of those requires depends on the relative importance of those things and how it's delivered. I just, I think we go through the exercise at the top and then we, um, the committee will bring something to the board and says this is what we think based on those factors is uh, appropriate for this training. But to just impose that because uh, I don't know why we would impose it now. I don't think we have any data to impose a one hour limit on that when we don't even know what the limits are on all this other training that teachers are doing. So I would speak against the amendment. Thank you. Um, I keep Mark. going. I know you're, you're Mark, <laughs> Vice Chair Davis. I keep skipping over because I think it's Mark's light on. <laughs> um, it, I would speak in favor of the amendment, but I'd also be open to adjusting it if we need to adjust it so it makes more sense. But I think the intent of the amendment was, um, Board Member Norton and I, if I can share, the morning after last board meeting, she and I sent an email to the uh, standards and assessment chairs and just said, we're one hair into this vote, like one hair, because it's three and a half hours. And if we're going to cover these 10 and four and three, it, it it's a lot for educators to process on 328. And so our hope was that it would be um, an introduction and exposure and um, and still, you know, an, an uplift and, and a motivator, but 
that anything more than an hour is a lot for educators who have so stinking much on their plates already. So um, anyway, I, I, if we need to adjust what this looks like so it makes more sense. I love your motion, by the way. I can't. Chair, I love his motion. I need to address the chair. It, it makes sense overall. It, it's an overarching um, understanding. But if we are going to pull one singular model training out of all of that, that's just going to address 320, I'm just, I guess I'm just asking it's not three and a half hours. So if that needs to come in this amendment or just in a, in a d discussion and hope that the committee would consider that, then you know, either way. Thank you. Board Member Hart? I think you skipped me. I, but board member I don't have anything for the amendment. I have a comment for the motion. Okay, okay. then we'll come back to you, Board Member Hart. That's why, because she's not on here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> board Member Lear? I always get so, I take that so personally, and I don't mean to. Um, well, I skipped her I, for I, 10 times. I was all ready to support this. I seconded it, and yet I think Dr. Norman makes a really important point, and it also reminded me, if we turn this to the LEAs, I feel like we have to turn it to the LEAs. And there could be certain LEAs that feel like it could be handled in 30 minutes. There could be some that know they have a problem and bless their heart for being so self-aware and it's going to take longer. I, I do support um, Vice Chair Davis's comment about maybe with an eye toward an efficient use of teacher's time or um, less is more or some other statement in that direction. But I don't want to tie the hands of LEAs who are, if, if, as we believe the best of them, looking at their own situations and uh, choosing their time limits appropriately. And I, I think that if they feel like they have things to say in that particular community, this is a really crucial opportunity. Thank you, Board Member Lear. Board Member Strait. Thank you. So I'm going to state something very personal right up front. And that is, as I look at what standards and assessment as their workload over the last year, and I look at the list of things that we don't even make it to in our meeting, and that list is becoming longer, this has become a very much a burden. And, uh, you know, as I look at some of that list, I, I see what's required, but I also things, see things that might just be resources. And if it's a resource, then what's the big deal with the time? If it's required, then that's a whole different, different element because required means required. A resource means if you're in need of it, you can reference it, you can look at it. And so in regards to these possible trainings and, and the long list that we have, I think we need to take a step back. Let's not limit ourselves at this point. Let's just take a step back and, and review and look at things. And uh, then we can move forward. Maybe we need to have a time period to get back to some of the what I consider to be the more important issues that are before us, our K through six social studies standards. That would be one of them. We're standards and assessment, okay? And so uh, I think we eventually get to all of this. But I think a step back, a deep breath, I understand your pain, I've been there. I've I've been a teacher for 30 years. I know, I know what these trainings are. I know when I go back to school at the first of the year, I turn on my computer and I start down the list of re requirements. I turn on my smart board and I work around the room as I listen because I've got to be able to do two things at one time or I'm not gonna be ready. Now, on the other hand, one of the items that I think a great training is, is is we have the all, we need to help teachers gain skills. And one of those skills is how do I deal with controversial subjects? Because we want our children to deal with current events and the things that are going on. But as we've seen by example, 
sometimes as a younger teacher, you make mistakes. And uh, when we were having our discussion of critical race theory with uh, Senator Mike Lee's staff in, in Washington, this very thing came up. And uh, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> That's a different story for another day. But anyway, uh, as I see that, there is a need for training for teachers to be able to deal with these controversial subjects and current events and to make sense of their learning in a real world. And so I don't want to limit anything. I don't want to throw it all out. I understand that frustration. Let's step back. I think this is a, a great motion because it gets us started and it gives us direction. And, uh, you know, we need to get back to the business of standards and assessment, first things first. And a lot of that pressure has been relieved today. And, and it's not that we're afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anything politically. But it does give us a chance in our current political situation to back off and clear our minds and then move forward. Thank you, Board Member Strait. Just a reminder, we're speaking to the amendment at this point. Board Member Booth. Um, I think I'll save mine when we get back to the main motion. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair Davis. Yeah, just to be clear, I think that this amendment is only if a singular training on 328 emerges. Not, I mean, if it's spliced up and combined with 428 and all these other things, you may have to, we may have to look at the time differently. But I think if I'm understanding right, this is just if a singular model training emerges. And I, just as a, another point of clarification, I was thinking when we voted on the first training that that was the model training, as I know some others of you were too. But then I recently went back and read the whole training again, and I had more clarity because clearly what we approved in the past, the audience was to people creating professional development, not to teachers. So it was guiding people who at their own LEAs are creating professional development so that they can stay within the rules of 328. And so that's where I finally <laughs> clicked in the difference. There was so many people have been saying so many different things, but that created a bit of clarity for me. Thank you. Board Member Booth, are you back again? I'm back again. <laughs> so uh, this amendment I resonate with but not just for uh, 328. I resonate with that for every training that has to be uh, presented and required of every teacher and educator and leader of learning in the state. And, and it feels to me like generally what Scott has, uh, Chair Hansen has uh, indicated here in his wonderful choice of words really ought to be much broader than just 328 as a state board, we ought to be saying to local boards and to local leaders of learning that training that has to be given in these thousands of different training areas need to be integrated, consolidated, prioritized, to be efficient and effectively delivered. And you can't do everything at once. And, uh, and so we've got to be very selective choose our battles, what are the critical issues right now in this district, in this school, with this group of educators, and let's provide at a state level with USBE resources that train leaders of, you know, those that will be creating the modules uh, that will uh, provide resources for them to, to do that training effectively based on the needs of their individual educators. But let's not get into the business of trying to produce that and to say it should be an hour or you need an hour on this or an hour on that. They know what they need and they might have to be reminded every once in a while of what they need, be, but because there's just so much of what they need that they can't possibly keep up with all of it without a few little nudges here and there of what needs to be prioritized because of needs of students or or legislative things that have come down from above. Uh, so 
I would love to see us somehow consider making this wonderful statement about training to be an umbrella statement about, we recognize there's a ton of training, including 328 and 428 and all the other stuff that you're already doing. So make it efficient, integrated, and consolidated and prioritized, and good luck. We're going to provide you with as many resources as possible to help you in that process. Let us know if we can help in some other way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Board Member Norton. Yes, um, and, and I think we've had a great, robust discussion here, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate debating things with all of you. Um, I just wanted to add, I, I really do have faith that our Standards and Assessment Committee are going to do a great job with those five words and really making action words. And I would like you, as you're doing that tomorrow, to be thinking that every minute that a teacher is in training, they are not collaborating, they are not communicating. They, there's a million things when it comes to teaching that they can't do because they are training. Yep, you can kind of wipe down your counters when you're having your training going on, but actual lesson planning can't be done because you just, that they take too much of both sides of your brain. So it is really important that we make these concise. And I, I, I am not a person of voluminous words. And I really think that there's not a training that can be had that has to take more than 60 minutes. And so I really, you know, that's why I feel strongly that we should be able to do this in an hour. So I'll just leave it with that. Thank you. So the motion, the amendment before the board is, is that the board directs staff to limit the time commitment of the model training addressing R277328 to no, no more than one hour. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Okay, those who are an aye, please raise your hand. So the ayes are um, Davis, Norton, oh sorry, Vice Chair Davis, Board Member Norton, Board Member Klein, Board Member Earl, and Board Member Hutchings, and Board Member uh, Hart. Hart. Uh, I, I said Davis. How many is that? That's six? Okay. So that motion fails. Okay. So the motion before the board at, oh, Board Member Hart, you wanted to talk to the, the original motion? Yes. I... You know, I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but we've spent a lot of time creating trainings and um, very rarely does the sit and get training change behavior. And I think we need to remember that. We need to remember our own best practices about professional development. Um, there may be information that has to be shared, but that does not mean it has to be in a presentation. I think we have to get away from one size fits all. We know that doesn't work in any classroom. We know it doesn't respect the adult learner. So, you know, I, yes, these things are important. These, this is information that's important to share, but we need to be careful how we do it and our expectations for, um, for uh, people delivering it. I also want to make note that a lot of districts, from what I understand, are done waiting and have moved on and have done their own. So I would, um, I would just urge a, a little bit more, um, uh, we need to get moving on this and get this, this taken care of, even if it's not perfect. Maybe it's a, um, a list of items that need to be addressed in the training that a district or an LEA chooses to do. Maybe it is um, a partial PowerPoint. Maybe it's a group of PowerPoint slides that, you know, the top uh, five are starred and the rest are optional. We need to uh, think outside the box on this because um, uh, uh, deputy, uh, Deputy Assistant Super, uh, Ms. Norman is right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Norman is right. There's a lot of information there that we didn't necessarily um, make requirements of, but they don't all have to be an individual slide and we need to consider both the time um, and uh, the urgency to get this kind of stuff done. As a practitioner, I'm already planning the beginning of the year and 
the list of things that have to be taught about are absolutely ludicrous. Um, so I don't know another way besides just putting it over the announcements and letting people work in their classrooms. I, I don't, I honestly don't know how all of this is going to get done and teachers are going to get ready and be fresh when students show up. So those are just some of my thoughts. And I love the motion and I think it should be a standard. Thank you. So she brought it around to the motion. <laughs> okay, um, Dr. Dixon. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. So, um, this is speaking to the motion, but just I want to piggyback on something that Board Member Hart said. We don't want to conflate this with professional learning. I think um, Board Member Hart described that very well, that professional learning is really honoring adult learning theory, and it, it involves coaching and follow-up and all of those kinds of things that we know about. And so making sure when we talk about training, it can be something like, uh, and this is speaking to the motion of the terminology, I think can capture the kinds of things that we do, for example, with training that's required of us as agency members from uh, human resources. So I got a notification that I'm due to make sure I get my um, ethics in the workplace training done. And the people that put those together, it's really well done. It's, it's kind of competency-based, so you watch a little video and answer questions, but you can actually go to the questions, and if you know the answers, you just you click on the answers. And, I, and there have been some of those that I've – they've been really important information, but I've been able to get through them in, you know, five, ten minutes instead of sitting for an hour and watching all the videos. So um, I think if we're honoring competency in – amongst our students, we should think of the same in our adults. And then it speaks to what Dr. Norman and, and, and um, Board Member Hart spoke to. So I think within the motion, we can work on all of those things and, and um, apply everything that's been said. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. Okay, so the motion before the board is that the board refer our 277-328 framework to the Standards and Assessment Committee for evaluation of educator training required by statute or rule so that training can be integrated, consolidated, and prioritized to be effic efficiently and effectively delivered. Um, we'll take a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? That voting is unanimous. Okay. Thank you so much, and thank you for the great discussion. We are going to take a five-minute break now. Oh, oh, no, we're still on this topic. We can't leave this topic because Board Member Earl has something. I'm just sorry, Jenny. Two seconds, Board Member and, Earl. and perhaps this will be covered tomorrow. It just wasn't clarified in there, and I'm not sure. But I actually would like to make a motion um, that we create and follow a process of using definitions that are first developed. Sorry. Defined. I I hate doing that. Uh, I'm getting I, old. Hello, this is me. I'll so say. embarrassing. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. So motion three: create and follow. Uh, well, not motion three. Create and follow process of using definitions that are first defined in Utah statute, next in USB rule, then in federal code, and leave it at that. Second. So we can address. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oops, so we have, a, we have a second. Now would you like to speak someone, to your motion? Someone who's running, who's, do you guys have it? Would you like to speak to your motion? Yeah, because I can copy it and send it. I, Patty, do you already? Yeah. Do you have it then? Right, Dr. Norman? Okay. And I'm just speaking to this because, I mean, even back to, what I spoke to earlier in my board member comment, that we have a tendency to break things down almost too much to where things become more complicated and convoluted, um, especially common, common words, common things like that. But um, I think we should be just sticking with what, it, what, is it, what does the code say? What does the federal law say? What does rules say? If we need additional um, direction when it comes to either code or law, I think we know the the process to go about doing that, and it needs to be there, not continually building out these mega dictionaries of some kind. So, anyways, that's my motion. Thank you, Board Member Earl. Uh, Board Member Hymas, hold on just one minute. Um, I just want to be able to read this out first. Um, do, do you not only already have it? I'll read it. 
I'll read it one more time though to make sure it's correct. So create, follow, slash follow, a process, or so it could be just create, of using definitions that are first defined in Utah statute, next in USB rule, and then in federal code. Well, should I do create? Follow. We'll do follow. Follow a process. This is our definition document. Oh, you'll say that. Never mind. Just okay. All right. So. Jenny, I'm reading this. So the motion before the board is that that they uh, win what? Follow a process of using definitions that are first defined in Utah statute, USBE rule, and then federal code in that order. Is that right? Okay. Uh, board Member Hymas. Yeah, I, I I hear some chatter, and I, I'm excited to hear what's coming. Um, but I, I want to support this motion, even if it's tweaked a little bit. I can't tell you the anxiety that I get every time I open a document and wonder what definition they're using for a specific term. And so each time we have a, a, a board meeting or, or some sort of meeting where I need to read, read through this, I'm thinking, okay, now I have to guess what the intent is behind this definition. So. Um, I speak in favor of this just so that we can all be on the same page, um, both board and staff, on what the intent of what we're trying to do um, with these words are. Thank you. Board member um, Earl, I'm just looking for clarification on this motion. This is dealing with 328 or this is... Uh, it's going to have to if it's on. And this yes. is part of the reason why I was kind of asking whether it's concerning the other relation because it, no I, <laughs> um, currently this is with 328 okay yes but okay. It, to me I guess a, a process could be followed for other things if we look like we've got to develop 50 definitions um, type of a thing I just think we need to just simplify but this is specific to 328 because we have a document with Okay. So all kinds of definitions make, that we're trying to put in. I just wanted to make sure we're referring yeah. back to what's yes. on the agenda as an action item. Okay. Um, a board member Hansen. Yeah. I'll um, first let me say that I think definitions are important. I think there are a lot of words that have been weaponized politically, um, twisted, um, words that uh, we don't dare say because they are so polarized. Um, and if we don't put our words in context and create a definition so that everyone knows we have a common language, um, especially on these controversial words, I think that we get ourselves in trouble to address what Board Member Hymas said. I think that you know we need to have that common understanding. So particularly with words that have become politically charged, we need to have definitions uh, for what we're doing. I think, though, that this motion is unnecessary. Our staff has put together a great process for um, definitions. You can find it in the backup for our standards and assessment committee. We've approved one set of definitions already. We're working on others. Uh, if you look at the table they produced, it says, you know, for example, abusive conduct. The first column says, what does the board approve? Where it says abusive conduct and it cites a board rule. And it goes to state or federal. And it finds, it's important though, when we look at the code and the rule, we look at context. I mean, if I pull a word from the tax code, that happens to be used in something that we're talking about education, totally different context, totally different definition. Look at Webster's. Every word has five or six different lines on it. We can't make a blanket statement like this and say this is the way we're going to define words. It will be nonsense if we followed that to the letter. So I think we have a process. We should keep using the process. Um, and we should define the words that are controversial, not well understood, so that we all have a common I think that maybe is where the discussion is. Which words do we need to define? And I think they are the words that are have been polarized or um, maybe can be taken in a different context and mean something different because we need a common understanding of what the word means as it's used. But I, the process we have is, is very capable of doing exactly what we need. It fills much of what's written there. It doesn't have a hard order of 
how those should be defined because I don't think we can do that. It's important that we take the word in context and we look at what the board has already done and then we look at federal law, state law that's on point and use those definitions. But that is the process now. I think this is unnecessary. Thank you, Board Member Hansen. Board Member Lear. And I'm probably going to say what Scott said in a different way, but there is a hierarchy of laws. We, and as much as we don't like it, uh, the laws that are found in uh, federal uh, documents, legal documents, trump the laws that are in state law. Um, state law de definitions trump those in board rule to the extent they're inconsistent. So we, it's not really a choice that we can vote on, I don't believe, as a board. Uh, but to say a little differently what Scott said also, there are probably 15 definitions of bullying um, among the Utah Code, the federal law, and we, yes, we need a common understanding, but if we take it from the law, we'll have 15 definitions of, of these various laws, even however we order them. There, it's, so it's not as, I wish it were as direct and um, clear as, as it's been stated in this amendment, but I, I think we just need to leave this to our staff to reconcile those definitions um, define the ones we need, we mean for this context and let them do their work and not direct them to do something that um, might be legally unsound or um, less clear than if they do that. Thank you, Board Member Lear. Vice Chair Davis. I just think the wording needs to be a little bit different here. Um, but I would support something like this, if it said something like that the board prioritizes defining words first found in federal and state and, and board rule, um, because I'm not sure about the order. I don't like long lists of definitions, but if we do do a list, it probably should be alphabetized and not in random order, depending where it's found here. I would prefer definitions be embedded in context in the training because I think it's more user friendly and I think it's it's more timely as the learners going through than putting a, a long list of definitions. But I'm not going to make an amendment about that. Um, but I would just suggest that. Um, so, you know, I don't know that the oh, wait order. A Why are we changing this? Okay. I, I don't know that the order. <laughs> I just think if you put an order like this, it's if if the standards and assessment committee does choose to make a list, which again I wouldn't favor, but if they do, it w I want it to be organized and alphabetized, not in a hodgepodge. Does that make sense? No. Yes, it does. <laughs> Board member Earl. Quite honestly, we need to stop making lists, and maybe that's more, more my point. We just need to refer to the law, to the rule. If we need something more in rule, then we create, not necessarily create the rule, but we go back to the rule. We have tons of definitions in rules, and we refer back to the rules. So I'm not, maybe this is not the right motion, but we need to stop creating lists and pulling in these outside entities to define what's in law or code or rule already. And I, I disagree that if we define a, a term that's, um, uh, I don't know, pick something out there, equality, Educational equity. equality, <laughs> if we pick that and we define it a certain way, who's to say they're going to go look up on USB's site as, the, as, a, as a parent, as an educator and say, oh, there it is, there's what, there's what we're doing. Maybe people within the educational setting are looking at that, but to say that it's now the common definition understood throughout the public is not, is not an accurate statement. And so I think we have to be careful when we begin to start taking commonplace words. And I understand there's divisiveness in those words. We know that. We're seeing a duplicity in meanings of all kinds of words that are contradicting, contradicting each other. My concern is when we build this dictionary of stuff to go, to go reference, when all we've got to do is say, go to the law itself, cite the law, instead of saying, okay, here's this compilation of 20 words, and now we're going to add more to it. And I'm guilty of that myself. I asked to add words to it last time, and I, that's why I'm somewhat reflective on this, going, where do we stop, right? And now you know what hard work means. Now you know what personal responsibility means. I, I'm not sure that we're, 
we're kind of micromanaging that or breaking that down in a way where it actually, I don't know that it does the good that we're hoping it does. And then we have the document that people can go to refer to now. I, I don't know public's going to know to go there to get the accurate <coughs> definition of what the way USB is defining it. So if it's in code, if it's in rule, we know we, we have somewhere to reference. If it needs to be in law, we, could, we need to probably go through a process if it needs to be significantly changed. So, and we, we do have educational equity that we voted on that we already approved. So. Thank you, Board Member Earl. Board Member Strait. Let's go to Super, Assistant Superintendent Norman first. Dr. Norman. I would be remiss today if I didn't um, state one of the things that started the list. And so I appreciate all of you as board members listening and having this discussion because it is of the utmost importance, all of the items that have been talked about this afternoon. So I'm glad everyone had a good lunch to start these conversations as we move forward. Part of the reason why there was a beginning of a list where there were, there were divisive words being used, and because everyone didn't agree on the definition, then intentions were questioned, and there were assumptions made towards people's character and um, even the work that they do here for the board. And one of the reasons why staff was asked, even came and said, I, would, I work for the board. We as staff are not elected officials. We did not put ourselves up to be elected officials. We honor you. We work for you. And in doing that, let us know what it is that you would like from us so that when we provide these professional learning opportunities on your behalf, we truly are doing the work of the board. And that was the original intention of those definitions, is to be able to say, when we do use these words, please know that we hope that we then have your, your ability to affirm alongside us that that was your intent when we gave that professional learning out to the field. Thank you. Board Member Strait, are you? I just, I, I agree with that. And I, I appreciate the attempt at creating greater efficiency because, yeah, I see the same uh, concern that, that uh, Board Member Earl has. Uh, but I don't think this is the way to do it uh, because I, I, I think we already have the process in place. In fact, I shouldn't say I think. We do have the process in, in place for uh, these definitions, and uh, we just need to be more efficient, effective in, in uh, our, our meetings in doing that. I don't know, if, can we pull up uh, the document that shows how we, what page is that on? Board member. You want it pulled up? Yeah, I want the board backup pulled up to show that that process as it, has existed. Angie, are you driving? Patty is. Patty, can you pull up the definitions from? So, can we go to the top where it, where it shows what the categories are? So, here it is right here. State or federal, other, and then there's board approved. This is the template for our definitions. The people that the, the reason we have so much uh, lack of efficiency is actually within the committee itself. It's me and everyone else on the committee. That's the problem, not the process. Thank you, Board Member Strait. Um, Vice Chair Davis. Just out of curiosity, how many words do we have in the definition list that are not found in federal or federal laws, state code, and board rules. Maybe we don't need a motion. Are, are all of our words that are in the definition list found in those things, or at least the grand majority of them? Most of them? Yeah, and, and the context does matter. I do understand that. For sure. If it's if it's too extensive. Yes, I nodded. <laughs> okay, thank you, um, Patty Norman again. So, um, in answering your question, how many do we have? We originally started out with I think there was over thirty in the very beginning. Is that about right, Chair Hansen? 
I believe so. Yeah, yeah and then, okay. Then as we as the board went through and had questions, for example, in R277-328, there was quite a discussion about the word abusive conduct during that when you were creating the, the initial training about the rule that uh, Vice Chair Davis was talking about that said, here's what you do in professional learning. At that time, there was the conversation on abusive conduct, and it, the statement was made, let's send this to committee to agree upon what that definition is. So if you look now, this is what the board did approve, um, I think it was about three months ago. Uh, so board approved is now the word abusive conduct. It is in alphabetical order, but it does say that this is the board approved definition now. It's found in state or federal code, but we did the um, R277-613 definition. So now as our, your staff, whenever we go out and use the term abusive conduct, we'll refer to it as with, you know, used in R277-613. So there'll be that consistency. Then if we go to the word accommodation, that was also a word that was discussed during that time. And and then we, they asked to bring that to the committee as well. And there's two types of accommodation. So those were referenced in here so that we would know how to reference them on our slide decks and to the LEAs when we're using them so they know where we brought them from. So age appropriate, uh, if you remember, there was a long conversation about that one as well. So the board requested for it to be in the notes. And then we found where that was at. So then in all of our trainings moving forward, it would be referenced in this way, consistency throughout. So this is a common slide deck that would then be able to state, here are these definitions that were that do take a lot of um, time um, and in, in trying to have those there so it was just about sometimes for example on that last one that I was on we could have used you know 53g we could have used r277-613 and then the committee chose to use um, 613 so that that's kind of where it all came from so what you're saying is the words that we're defining are words that are found in board rule and code already so we we're already doing this. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So I'm saying that they're already defined in board rule or code, but they weren't agreed upon by board members when they were talked about. So the board members would like at that time, so maybe not now. Got it. There might be a change, but at that time they would like to have more discussion on what it meant to be clear. Now there might be a different time and may, maybe everyone has a different collective feeling. That's helpful. Thank you. Board member Hutchins. Thank you. Um, I learned a phrase this summer um, that I really like and I've been using since, and it's clarity is kindness. And I think this amendment brings a clarity that will be helpful in the discussion tomorrow. And I think so even more now that we look at this because it does provide an order of things. It is this board's responsibility to provide clarity and guidance to staff. And I think if we can give them that clarity and guidance, then it makes these decisions a lot easier going forward. So. Thank you, Board Member Hutchings. Board Member Hansen? Yeah, I first need to apologize for letting some of my frustrations bubble to the surface today. <laughs> um, been invested in this for a long time, and there's been a lot of effort, um, not on my part, but on staff's part in particular, to try to muddle through all this. Um, we Definitions are a part of the whole legislative process. We have R277100, which we've had for a long time, which is a list of definitions and the ways that we use them in rules and in other things that the board does. Um, we, as we waded into the um, R277328 area, we came up with a lot of terminology that wasn't in R277100 and wasn't defined well in different areas of law. Um, for example, state statute and other areas, and we had disagreements as we talked about it amongst board members about what things meant. Um, look at how long it took us to come up with a definition of educational equity uh, because it had the word equity in it, and equity right now is a word that means different things to different people. Um, it, we have to have definitions of words to provide that clarity, and I think if we ask staff of some of our policy making uh, staff who specialize in that. If, if these definitions are necessary um, for clarity, I think they would say yes, and I'll give them a chance to respond. We can ask that question. Um, but then to have a hierarchy that's laid out uh, without taking any into account context or other things, it makes no sense. I won't provide clarity. That'll provide confusion. So in some cases, if you scroll through here, we've chosen to use the Webster's definition because the definitions that we pulled out of code didn't fit. 
They didn't match. And so we pulled one of the Webster's definitions and said, this is the one that makes the most sense. So what we do by defining these words for the Utah State School Board and the way that we use them is provide clarity in our context. We say, in, as the, we're using this word with this meaning, and then everyone knows that. And it's not necessarily geared to members of the public, but they know where to find it. We'll have a document where all that's laid out and shows this is the way we're using this word. Then when we have an argument or a heated discussion or whatever we have, we'll be speaking the same language. And we won't be pulling a definition from here on one side and from here on another side. We'll at least be able to have that common understanding and use the, the words that we need to as we have our discussions. So I do believe, I, I'm not frustrated at all with the need for definitions. I think we have to do that. That's just a principle of you know, having a common understanding. But I'm frustrated because we have the process in place. Our staff has done an excellent job of laying things out like this, pulling definitions that are appropriate for the, the committee and the board to uh, consider, and then vote and say, this is what we agree on. Once we agree, then we have that common understanding. We can move forward. That's why I think, and that's why my frustration is coming out, because I think that we have this in place. We've been doing this not just for 328, but even from before with our definitions document. And to be rehashing this, I just don't see as a, a good use of time, but maybe the discussion is valuable. So that's, sorry. Okay, seeing no more lights. The motion before the board is something. <laughs> I know, I know. Thank you. The motion before the board is the board follows a process of using definitions that are first defined in Utah Education Statute, Utah State Board of Education rule, and then federal code in that order. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Um, will the ayes raise their hand, please? The ayes are board member Hymas, board member um, Klein, board member Earl, board member Hutchings, board member Davis. Um, that motion fails. And board member Hart. And board Sorry. member Hart. I'm up here. Thank you. <laughs> I see you up there. <laughs> okay, and board member Hart. That motion fails. We will now take a five minute break, and probably it'll end up being 10, but five minute break <laughs> so that then we can start into our committee reports. And it's already 20 to 4, everyone, just for clarity. <laughs> 